Johns Sage. Uh, she was a nurse in the, um, was it the nurse? Navy Nurse Corps. Navy Nurse Corps. Mm -hmm. And uh, she attained a rank of Lieutenant Junior Grade. She served stateside, um, Great Lakes Naval Hospital, Corpus, and in Corpus Christi Naval Hospital, Eagle Mountain Lake in, um, uh, in Texas. So um, I'd just like to start out and ask you, where were you when you heard about Pearl Harbor? When I heard about Pearl Harbor, I was just getting off a of night duty up in Rochester, Minnesota. And uh, What were you doing at that time? Well, I was on general duty at the hospital there at St. Mary's. So you Rochester. were already a nurse I then? I was already a nurse, yeah. Okay. And nobody had ever heard of Pearl Harbor, you know, didn't know where it was. The other girls I roomed with didn't know where it was either, but of course we soon learned. And uh, I was up there. For a while, and then I went down to the hospital in Waterloo and worked there, and then I decided I would. It was time to go in the service, and I looked in the Army Air Corps or Army Nurse Corps and decided I would rather be in the Navy. And uh, so I joined the Navy Nurse Corps in January of 1944, and was stationed at Great Lakes Naval Hospital for six months. And then 11 of us got orders to go to Corpus Christi Naval Hospital. And I was there for a year and a half. And uh, and then in August they dropped the bomb, you know. And, and then in December I got orders to go to Eagle Mountain Lake, Texas. And I had, I had always requested hospital ship duty. And here I finally got orders, and it was I couldn't get out of Texas. <laughs> so, but then that, of course that's where I met Charlie, which was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there until uh, I got out of service, which was uh, first of April. Okay. And uh, what else? I don't. Well, you know, I guess some of the things I like to ask you, what made you decide you wanted to be a nurse? Well, and a girlfriend of mine, who gradu we graduated from high school together, and we both decided, we didn't really know what we wanted to do, so we decided we'd like to go into nurses training, which we did, and that was in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, at the hospital there, and then we would both went up to Rochester to work, and uh, and then when I went down to the hospital in in Iowa at my home at Waterloo, and uh, by that time there were very there wasn't any more single nurses around. They were all in the service, and uh, so that's when I decided to go in the service. Mm -hmm. And my brothers were both in service, and uh, well, it was just the thing to do. I thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you once you signed up for the service? Did they? What was your training like? Well, the first six months I was at Great Lakes, mm -hmm. and that was like an indoctrination. And uh, then when I went to Corpus Christi, then I was in. Uh, on a medical ward a good share of the time and also in Dependence Hospital. They had a big Dependence Hospital down at Corpus Christi. Mm -hmm. I worked there quite a bit. And uh, I don't know what else. <laughs> um, what sort of um you know what sort of duties did you have as a nurse then? Well you were you were uh a charge nurse. You were in charge of the corpsman. Mm -hmm. Usually, depending on the size of the ward, you had several corpsmen working under you, and of course you had to assign duties to them and mm -hmm. do a lot of paperwork. And so, so it was mostly like a kind of a managerial mm -hmm. sort of a, a, mm -hmm. a post that you had. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you weren't involved in any um, any medical you know, 
um, emergencies or anything like that? No, or? no. Because mm -hmm. like I say, I was on a medical ward. They were mostly medical patients, not surgical mm -hmm. patients. And then the dependence hospital was the wives and the children of the of the servicemen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was. I'll always remember. It was quite a ways from the nurses' quarters, and uh, it was so pretty walking home from there at night after I, like, I'd work 3 to 11 and 11 o'clock and go home, and the sky would be just beautiful with the stars and the, and the clouds, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is kind of silly. To, <laughs> but anyhow, but it was, uh, and, and it just met a lot of nice, fun people. Mm -hmm. Kept in contact with several of them for quite a while, but then slowly, slowly, it, so now I, I really don't know anybody. Well, no, not anybody that was I was in service with. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was all, uh, well, we'd gripe a lot, but which was very natural. But it was fun, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, So how old were you at the time whenever you were, you know? Well, let's see, I was 21 when I got out of nurse's training, and so I was probably 22, 23. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so how and did it, you, uh, what were the circumstances behind whenever you met, when you met Charlie? Well, like he said, <laughs> Yeah, had to to, uh, uh, to get to the dining room. You had to walk through the old club. And where uh, was this at again? Eagle Mountain Lake, Eagle Texas. Mountain Lake. Now this okay. is between Fort Worth and and Dallas. Okay. And it was just a small base. Mm -hmm. And there was this other girl I got orders with. Was not one of my special friends, but <laughs> we were kind of thrown together. And then there was an older nurse already there. So there were only the three nurses on the base, and um, well, before we got there, there had been Marine women Marines there, but there, they had already left when we got up there, and it was just a, uh, a dispensary just where guys were with colds and nothing. Nobody was very sick, you know. Mm -hmm. It was very small. Mm -hmm. In a small, uh, I think there was three doctors, and uh, I don't remember how many corpsmen, but uh, not, it just wasn't very big at all, mm -hmm. and we used to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. What sort of things did you do like, for fun? <laughs> well, we, we lived, the nurses' quarters it was at one end of, the, of a barracks, and... Uh, We'd have a we had a living room and a couple bedrooms, you know. <clears throat> but this whole group, there'd be a a group of guys would come up, and we'd get together almost every night, either have dinner together or a lot of times we'd get steak or something and cook it there in our part in our mm -hmm. quarters. And there was oh gosh, about six of us that would get together. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we'd go into Fort Worth every now and then, you know. And it was it was really kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So you were in this position for um, how long then? Well, as far as from uh, we I I went to we went to Eagle Mountain Lake just before Christmas. 1945, and then I got out of service the 1st of April mm -hmm. of 46, <coughs> so we weren't there very long. Mm -hmm. And then Charlie was there. Uh, when did you come to Eagle Mountain Lake? What month? The end of January, I believe, he, he came. I was there when you came. I I don't remember when we came back. It was a, they had established a night fighter base. It was strictly 
a night fire base. And it was in the process of closing too, because see the war was over. Mm -hmm. And um, there were. So you were a nurse then um, for about, was it about two years then that you were a nurse or three? Uh, I was in the service for 28 months. 28 months, okay. I went in as an ensign mm -hmm. and then promoted to Lieutenant JG mm -hmm. in 1945. What was your impression of being a woman in the service? I mean, how, how, did, <laughs> how did it make you feel? What sort of experiences did you well, have? I was kind of proud of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I came home, came home on leave and uh, was in my uniform. You know, of course, all the guys would be coming home on leave in uniform too. Everybody, everybody be in uniform. Nobody was in civilian clothes. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys that were in the service, and it was. I thought it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. and, and I think my family was proud of me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, my younger brother was in the Navy and my older brother was in the Army. And uh, so my mother had a banner in the, the window with three stars on. Have you seen those? Uh -huh. Yeah. Each star was for each child that yeah. you had in service, yeah. right? Yeah. So your other siblings, did they come out through the war yeah. okay? Yeah, neither one. Well, actually, my younger brother and I got, never did get overseas. He was stationed in uh, Washington, D.C. most of the time. He was mm -hmm. uh, in radar. And uh, he always regretted not, get, not getting overseas. Mm -hmm. But my brother, older brother was in uh, China and Australia and... Well, he was in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. He was an army officer. And I always put in, we had to fill out a, uh, oh, I, I, I think they were called progress reports every six months. And you requested, if you had a request for where you wanted to be, and I'd always put in for a hospital ship or um where, where is it in Washington? I, Washington State. I always put in. Anyhow, I never got to any mm -hmm. any of those places. But why I did, did always want to be on a, a hospital why ship. Why is that? Why did you want to go on a hospital ship? Oh, I just thought it would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Did you want to? Did you want to do a different job on the hospital ship, or are you? No, just... no, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Just. Uh, I just thought it would be interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, did you ever come across any any um, convalescing, you know, soldiers who were back from the war who had been oh, yeah. wounded and yeah. you know? Um, At Corpus Christi, we had quite a few back, like several guys had fungus infection and. Uh, Oh, what else? Malaria. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had malaria. What else? But they were back from the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. So you came across mostly veterans from the South Pacific mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. during your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all all from the South Pacific. None from the European theater. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. um, were you able to keep in touch with your family? You know. Oh yeah. Pretty easily. Oh yeah. And how far away were you from your family then, again? Well, of course, I was from Waterloo, Iowa. Iowa. And uh, Corpus Christi was quite a ways. Mm -hmm. That was the farthest. And then, of course, after I got married, I was farther yet, because we <laughs> lived in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and like I said, no, I, I'm sure that this was a great shock to both Charlie's parents and mine. You know, when we decided to get married, because they didn't know anybody from sure. that part of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people, including me, kind of had the idea New Jersey was like Jersey City. Mm -hmm. 
but where we leave, lived in northern New Jersey was, uh, and he was from Chatham. It was beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And that's where we built our house. So what, what was it about Charlie that made you, uh, you know, <laughs> that made you decide, you know, this guy's pretty nice. I can, I can, I can. That's just what our, our son said. Well, how come you ever, how come ever you, how come did you pick Dad? And I, I think I said, well, he made me laugh. Uh -huh. And that was it. <laughs> Which, and he still makes me laugh. <laughs> well, if he was looking at you through the bottom of a drink glass, he might have been a little tipsy when he made you laugh. <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> yeah. Well, I heard Laura Bush who was asked the same question, gave the same answer that George made her laugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Poor George. <laughs> he doesn't, uh, doesn't make very many people laugh, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. no, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, um, well, um, you know, do you have anything, you know, any, any experiences that kind of stick out in your mind, you know, that, 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 um, that you'd like to, to talk about? Or? I, I really can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. It was... Uh, it was a big part of our lives, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much an enjoyable part. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything else, though, okay. really. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. I mean, um, um, I don't have any more questions or anything, okay. so, um, you know, I'd like to thank you, though, for, you know, the part that you did yeah. play in, in World War II and in our nation's history, yeah. so. Um, thank you. You know, we... You know, like, like I've said to a lot of the veterans, you know, a lot of times they think, oh, well, heck, I didn't do anything, you know, why would yeah. you want to talk to me? But, you know, it's been documented that, you know, the success of, the, of, of you know, the United States in the war was mm -hmm. due to everyone helping. I mean, there was mm -hmm. such a huge mm -hmm. machine, you know. Oh, it was. It was just amazing how the U.S. came together there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I think... Franklin Roosevelt was the big uh, instigator in, in a lot of that. I agree. He was, <coughs> he was a beloved president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the first president I ever voted for. <laughs> when I, I, I guess I was working up in Rochester then. And uh, didn't know much about politics in those days. Mm -hmm. Still don't. <laughs> Probably a good thing nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. <laughs> so, yeah. um, well, um, you know, we can conclude the interview if you like, unless you have anything okay. else you'd like to talk about. So. I think it's amazing you guys doing this, though. On on your, I mean, all of this is on your own, mm. and it's amazing. Yeah. Well, um, it's really a, it's it's a hobby, and it's turned into kind of a passion, you know. Yeah. Where, we get yeah. to talk to a lot of interesting people and learn a lot about history firsthand, mm -hmm. you know, by the people who lived it and mm -hmm. not having to read a book all the time about it, yeah. you know, or watch yeah. the History Channel. We can actually talk to the people who yeah. who flew the planes and who, you know, mm -hmm. who did all the things that that you read about and you hear about, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you, when you hear about the stories on, you know, the History Channel or on TV or in the newspapers and books, the war seems so far off, like mm -hmm. it's, you know, so long ago. But when you talk to the people who lived it, mm -hmm. you realize it's, it's mm -hmm. it hasn't really been that long ago no. when you really think about it. I mean, everybody has, they yeah. they have the same emotions that they had back then, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, I think it's, um, I, I feel very lucky to be able to talk to people about it, mm -hmm. so. Well, I think, I think it's great that you're doing it. And, uh, I appreciate do it. You, do you live here in Tulsa? Yeah, in Bixby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 A funny story. Uh, you're not recording. Oh, I am, but that's okay. We can <laughs> keep running unless we turn it off. There was a uh, uh, Captain Pete Bonner uh, <laughs> who was engaged to a gal in Dallas. And uh, so he and I got on a, an accident <laughs> review board. We're supposed to go out and look at accidents. And we never did, but we manufactured one down <laughs> in the uh, at Eagle Mountain Lake, <laughs> and we were taking off from uh, Cherry Point, 
in a beach craft, a twin engine beach. And the weather was closing in. First, we could we go and get one engine started, and Pete was uh, took his pen knife out, and the fuse box was on top of the instrument paneling, stuck the pen knife in, and blew sparks all. But the engine started, and we out the end of the runway, and the tower is saying, "Return to the line. The field is closed." And Pete's saying, "I don't receive you, so I, we're leaving." And <laughs> so we took off. We had to drop a guy off in Georgia, and they wouldn't let us turn it. They wouldn't let us. They made us turn the engines off, and then we couldn't get it started. And uh, they said it would take two or three days for them to get the part and do it. So we uh, stopped a guy, a kid in a jeep, Pete out there stopped him, and he said, "Have you got any bungee cord on this space son?" And he said, "Yes, sir." Go get it. <laughs> he came back. Pete made a loop over one of the prop blades and tied it to the back of the Jeep and said, Drive up there to the end and then come speeding that. And it spun the prop and started it. So we got, we come down by this time, it's very late. We come down to Eagle Mountain Lake and there's no lights there or anything. And I said, Well, buzz the nurse's quarters and Barry will. <laughs> Call the officer of the day. And Mary didn't have that authority. Turn on the lights, so the lights never came on. So when we went over to Meacham Field in Fort Worth and landed, and they had a, a place where Navy planes could get service there. And we taxied in there and turned it off and uh, told this old chief what what had happened. He said, "Oh, I can I can fix that. We got the parts." And Pete said, uh, uh, "What kind of booze do you like, chief?" He said. He said, Jack Daniels, he said, why don't we come out in the morning and uh, see how you're making out? And we went out, took a good bottle of Jack Daniels and said, you're having a little difficulty with that, it's going to take some time. And she said, yes, sir, another bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> I think we were there for three nights. Four, four days you were there. <laughs> but then when we left, do you have anyone waiting for you? Oh, no, no. Oh. When we left to go home, Pete and I, to go back to Cherry Point, we had to take a, what was he, Mary? As a young kid, he was a prisoner. Yeah, he was a prisoner. I think he had gonorrhea. Oh, <laughs> just a young kid. From but uh, we had to take him back and deliver him to the Cherry Point. He had yeah. never flown before. And he was in the back of us. In the, we're fly, flying along fat, dumb, and happy about 14,000 feet, and an engine quit. And I'm on a wobble pump up and away, and, and uh, Peter's saying, I had, I had the charts open in my lap, Pete's saying, where are we, where are we? I said, how the hell do I know, we're, just, we're, we're on the right course. So then suddenly the other engine went out, it was quiet, when <laughs> really quiet, and Pete's yelling, mayday, mayday, in the mic, and the, I turned around to tell this kid that, Tighten his belts because we were probably going to go belly up in a field, and he turned green, and we we had stopped in South Carolina, I think, to pick something up on the way home and refuel. And the kid said, uh, "If I promise that I'll be there, could I go the rest of the way by bus?" <laughs> what well, did, did the engine start then? Is that how oh, it yeah, well, we got it fixed to Fort Worth. The old chief fixed it. Oh, but I mean, coming, yeah, but coming the air, back. When you quit in the engine, quit in the yeah. air. That was carburetor ice. Okay. So you were able, so yeah. we yeah. were yeah. able so to start it. As soon as we got down, the, the, so you so could land. 6,000 feet, the air was warm around that. Oh, it, so um, it had, oh, it was able to start that. Yeah, we okay. turned yeah. the carburetor heaters and it started, <laughs> one to start and the other one started. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a funny story. Yeah. Well, um, I have no further questions, Mary. So okay. I appreciate your help and letting us interview you yeah. here, okay? That's very so, good. Okay. I think, you're, I think you're doing a great service. I appreciate it. I wish we a bit more exciting. Oh, I think you know, no, usually the great. guys with the most exciting stories. They won't tell you. <laughs> they oh, don't yeah. like to talk about it. My kid brother has had uh, a wild time in the uh, infantry and. Europe wounded, captured, killed a guard to get away, and all. 
but he never would talk about it. His son doesn't know anything about his service. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a pilot here, an Army pilot, P-51 pilot, Charles Goss, who would make a great adventure story, but he has Alzheimer's and he... Uh, oh, no. But he got shot down over France, and uh, the French uh, resistance rescued him, and they stumbled back through, got shot up, and the one guy got killed by a German machine gun nest they stumbled into, and uh, a great, exciting story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he'd have been a great one, but that's, of course, not available now. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll go ahead and shut the camera down, so okay. thanks again. Well, you're very welcome.